responsive design. What is it? Is it just a fad? And how do you get started? G'day, my name's Dan, and welcome to a short presentation I've put together in association with this mob, IIT Designs. Now, you may have heard of responsive or adaptive design and thought, that sounds pretty cool, but what is it? You may have even asked yourself, hey, is this just another design fad? And is it really for me? Well, I don't believe it's a design fad. And over the next few minutes, I'll show you why. And I'll give you a taste of the basic principles of responsive design and how you can get started. Now, when web designers talk about responsive design, what they're really talking about is a website that scales or changes its layout or adapts the content depending on what device it's being viewed on. You want to frame your content differently uh, depending on the device it's being viewed on for many different reasons. But the most obvious one is to show off all your hard design work. You want to make sure it looks good on a big screen TV, on a laptop screen, on a netbook screen, on a mobile device, and make sure that your content scales so everything you want the user to see is being seen. Users also want different things from web content depending on what device they're viewing it from. If you're viewing web content from a handheld device in a retail store or a supermarket or out in a pub, you're looking for different things from that content than you're looking from them if you're viewing it on a big screen or on a laptop or even on a touch screen device such as a tablet. It's because of this that I think we need to frame our content differently on different devices. Let's take a look at some web pages and have a look how their content adapts to different environments. Okay, so we're going to start off by having a look at the Age Newspapers website. We're going to be using a Chrome extension called Resizer to test how it responds to different screen sizes relating to tablets and mobile devices. To start off with though, to show you how it all works, this is the display of the website in the desktop mode. And then the plugin works its way down to a tablet with a landscape um, rotation. Then also the portrait rotation. You see on the Australian website here, you're already beginning to have to scroll around that site to get to the content. And it's not necessarily formatted to be viewed on a tablet device. And then we're going to work our way down to a small tablet. As you can see there, we can't even see my mate John Birmingham up there anymore. But yeah, you have to do a lot of scrolling around to grab the content. Now, give it that uh, the age actually has their own web app. Um, so when you do go to the uh, Age website via a mobile phone, it picks up the fact that you're viewing it through a mobile web browser and it uh, redirects you to a mobile version of its site. But that's not what we're talking about here with responsive design. What we're talking about with responsive design is actually coding once for all environments. Let's take a look at Yahoo and go straight down to the mobile view of the site. Oh, the... Um, Plugins had a bit of a freak out here, but we'll have a look at it anyway. Look, once again, a lot of scrolling around would be needed to see the full width and breadth of that site. Once again, Yahoo have their own web apps for mobile devices, but that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about responsive development. Code once. Now, let's stop picking on media and start picking on some um, educational institutions. This is the Open University site. Let's have a look at it on a small tablet. And once again, as you can see, you need to do a lot of scrolling around. It's not framing the content in its best light. You can't see the whole page loaded up all at once. And then you work your way down to the mobile version of the plugin, and you see that viewing this page on a mobile device would be actually quite irritating and and maybe hard. I mean, you can scroll out, but everything gets a lot smaller then. All right, so let's have let's move along to a site that's actually using responsive development and design. This is the Creative Commons search page. As you can see, when we enter uh, the different device widths, the desktop to start off with, working our way down through the desktop into the portrait mode of a tablet 
sorry, landscape mode of a tablet, down to the portrait mode of the tablet. You can see things starting to change here. Ah, uh, there we go, single column. So I've gone down a number of columns into a single column, and then we're finally at the mobile version of the site. Now, as you can see, it looks completely different than what it looked like for the desktop version, and everything's basically been formatted into one column. So you don't need to scroll around the page to actually find what you're looking for. As you can see, when you come back up, and the next, when we go up to the um, larger tablet, you'll see that We've gone from, say, a four-column layout, then we go down to the mobile, and it becomes a you know, one-column layout. Now, this is actually one of my favorite sites, and just to show you, you don't need the plugin to actually be able to view these fluid sites in all their glory, how they would appear on these devices with smaller screens. You can just adjust your browser size. And as you can see, everything on this site has gone down into a one-column layout to be best, and then as once you come up to a smaller tablet, two columns, bigger tablet, three columns. So the content is being viewed in its best light. So that's just showing you, you don't actually need the uh, plugin, the resizer plugin, although it's very handy, you don't need the resizer plugin to view these fluid sites. This is one of my favorites too. This is for a design company. As you can see, when you come down, the illustration disappears. I mean, on a mobile device, do you really need the illustration? I mean, are you after that sort of content when you're searching on a mobile device? Or are you in a bookstore trying to make a decision on a book or in the supermarket trying to make a decision on uh, a new soup mix uh, that you're just about to purchase and you want information about it? You don't care about the graphics at that point. And that sort of responsiveness takes care of that. Oh, the plugins freaked out a little bit here, but that's how it looks on a mobile device. This is another great example of responsive design, and this time the designers have chosen not to get rid of the graphics altogether, but act to actually res make the graphics responsive as well. Uh, and we'll be talking about that in just a second of how they've uh, achieved that. But as you'll see, they've used the graphics, they've just scaled them down to suit the device that it's being viewed on. And last but not least, I had to show you this one because I think this slogan actually sums up what responsive design is all about and what you're trying to achieve as a designer using responsive design techniques. It's basically your site does not sit on a desk anymore. So how do you get started with responsive design? Well, there's a few prerequisites you need to have a firm knowledge of XHTML or HTML and even HTML5. Uh, you also need a knowledge of cascading style sheets and how to use them. Uh, if you've got that, you're ready to jump into the world of responsive design. Uh, a great place to start is the initializer uh, template for the HTML5 boilerplate and I'm going to include the web address down here in uh, the video and also in the description. The docs on that site are a great place to learn about responsive design. If you're looking to jump right in, what you need to think about is good semantic HTML. That's the basis. Fluid layouts with percentages and M's instead of picks. You need to think about at media inquiries. An initializer is a great place to start learning about at media inquiries. And the other thing to jump into is some of the great open source jQuery plugins that are available on the net. Just do a Google search and you'll be surprised at uh, what's out there and what people are willing to share. If you want to know more about responsive design or mobile technologies, come and have a chat with us at Interactive IT Designs.